Expropriation without compensation is back on the agenda following the gazetting of the Expropriation Bill of 2020. This is running in parallel with the constitutional amendment process, which seeks to change Section 25 of the Constitution. Joining me to discuss this is Anthea Jeffrey of the Institute of Race Relations. Anthea, welcome. What is your reading of the risks associated with this new legislation? Well, first of all, the very notion of expropriation without compensation is fundamentally damaging. Right around the world, it's recognized that governments must have expropriation powers, but they must also pay compensation to put the person who's expropriated back in the position they would otherwise have been. But we are going down a completely different path, empowering the government to expropriate property, not just land, of various kinds. And it will be either for no compensation or for compensation which is way beyond market value and not enough to put the person back in the position they would otherwise have. And it's being rushed. As you mentioned, the expropriation constitutional bill is, is being taken through the final public hearings and then we'll be back before the ad hoc committee in a very truncated six week or so process so that it can be adopted by parliament before the end of the year. And at the same time, we suddenly have the gazetting of the expropriation bill of 2020, which is one of the general laws which will be used against the background of the constitutional amendment bill to take specific property. And it will empower organs of state at all three levels of government including all municipalities, to expropriate not only land, but property of various kinds against either zero or inadequate compensation. Anthea, that is certainly cause for great concern. What recourse, if any, would citizens have in terms of challenging an expropriation action by the state? Well, that really touches on one of the key problems with the bill. It sets out a procedure by which a municipality, for example, can expropriate land. Say it wants land for a housing development. The trouble is that the steps that the municipality has to take on a preliminary basis are very brief and very tilted against the owner. So the municipality must first of all make some sort of offer to purchase. Secondly, it can investigate your property. Thirdly, it can send you a notice of its intention to expropriate and give the owner the opportunity to respond. But the municipality doesn't have to, to, doesn't have to reply to the points made to it in those representations. It's supposed to take them into account, but you can never really tell how much it has. And once it's taken those three simple steps, it can proceed with an expropriation, which means it will issue a notice of expropriation, it's supposed to be served on the owner, and that will state the date on which the ownership of the property will automatically pass to the municipality. And that date could be set very soon. It could be within a week or two weeks because the only time limit in the bill is that ownership can't pass before the date on which the notice was served. But it can pass the next day, within a week, within a fortnight. There's no limitation to prevent that. Secondly, the, the notice will say on what date the right to possess the property will pass to the municipality. And again, it will happen automatically. And both ownership and possession will pass irrespective of whether the compensation has been paid. Now the compensation offered may be far below what the owner regards as legitimate and reasonable. And the owner will have the right to go to court to contest it, but that's going to be a paper right for most people because it's very expensive to go to court. And if particularly you've already lost ownership and possession, of what might be your home or business premises vital to your being able to earn a living, then it's all the more difficult to go to court. In addition, it seems that the onus has been put on the expropriated owner to show that the amount of compensation is too little. And if the owner fails to discharge that, that onus, then he must pay not only his own costs, but a big portion of the municipality's costs as well. So for most people, the option to go to court is simply not a meaningful choice. And what should happen instead, of course, is that since Section 25 guarantees that expropriation must meet certain criteria, it must really be in the public interest, it must really have just and equitable com compensation accompanying it, what the municipality should do is go to court first and say, this is what we're proposing to do. 
We want an order confirming that this is in keeping with Section 25, and then it can proceed. And of course, it should pay the compensation before it takes ownership. So the real risk is that the procedures have been set up in a way that favors the state, is against the owner, and which the owner in practice will find it very difficult to contest. So, Anthea, one of the risks here is that local officials will be given an inordinate amount of discretionary power to enact acts of expropriation and that recourse at the courts will be very difficult. In an article that you wrote for the Daily Friend online newspaper, you indicated one example of where the state has already uh, abused its powers and that was the case of Becky Tlamini in KwaZulu-Natal. Could you uh, shed some light on this particular case and, and what it represents in terms of the, the failures of the government's land reform efforts? Sure. I've been explaining the procedures that are supposed to be applied. Um, there are also procedures that are supposed to be applied under the existing Act, which is the Expropriation Act of 1975. But in Becky Dlamini's case, those procedures were simply not followed. Um, Mr. Dlamini had inherited more than 3,000 hectares of land in the Grafford area from his great-grandfather. And for years, of course, he couldn't obtain title. The apartheid laws had made it impossible for many years. But finally, in 2002, he did get title. But in 2013, the municipality expropriated the land from him and didn't serve a notice of expropriation on him. So he didn't know about the expropriation until months after it had taken place. It was expropriated in March 2013. In December that year, he started hearing rumors that his land was among the properties that had been taken. So he went to the municipality to inquire and they said, yes, we did expropriate. And he said, well, please, I need a notice. I need some documents. And they simply re re ignored his requests. And the attorneys he went to said, we can't go to court unless we have the documents to show it's been expropriated. He went to the deeds office. They said it's already been registered in the name of the municipality, but he still didn't have the notice of expropriation. And it took two years from when he first began inquiring for his attorneys to get that notice. Then this municipality further really confused the issue by saying perhaps the, the, the whole process had been run by the housing department and that was where he needed to seek relief. So finally, when he went to court in December 2016, he was late and he was thrown out of court as a result because the court took the view that he hadn't acted in time and he hadn't adequately explained all the delays between when he'd first heard about the expropriation and when he'd gone to court. But many of those delays were of course very much the fault of the municipality. So Mr. Domini, who was offered 117,000 rand in compensation, but never paid it, has lost his land, has not got the money, and has no further court remedy available to him, unless perchance he can have this high court ruling set aside. So he really does illustrate that people can be enormously vulnerable to these sorts of powers. There were processes in the 1975 Act which weren't followed in practice and which left him really completely with no adequate means of obtaining satisfaction. And the, the risk is that when we have the new procedures and the 2020 Act, which are unfair to begin with, but if they're not followed in practice, then people will find it even more difficult to defend their property. Well, Anthea, many commentators have said that this new draft bill offers, quote, certainty on the expropriation issue but I actually think that that uh, is misguided and your article certainly highlights many of the dangers attached with the EWC process in its current form. So that's all we have time for today. Please do remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and also check out the link in the description below for our 30-day free trial to the Center for Risk Analysis. That's it from me, David Ansara. Until tomorrow, take care.